what's up guys? Uh, there's uh, some uh, tools available for us to use to create a SWOT model. So we have ArcSWOT, so we can use ArcSWOT with ArcGIS, you have ArcGIS license, right? Also, if you want to use open source GIS, we have QSWOT right now, so you can use QGIS. It's open source, it's free, it's good. But there's another one available, it's called MWSWOT. Have you guys been using MWSWOT before? I'm not. Uh, recently, uh, I looked into uh, MW SWOT because I want my uh, SWOT output viewer to support MW SWOT products. So I spent a little bit of time looking into that. What I found is, oh gosh, the MW SWOT is very similar comparing to Q SWOT. So today in this video, uh, I want to compare these two Q SWOT and MW SWOT and see how close they are, and probably we will dig a little bit further to see why they are very close and uh, something more detailed technical part. And um, okay, let's just jump right in. Let's first look into the QSWOT interface. QSWOT is a relative a new tool uh, for SWOT modeling. I think it just created like two or three years ago. And, um, and this tool is based on the QGIS, which uh, is an open source GIS platform. Right now it's getting very popular uh, uh, compared to other GIS platform. I think it's uh, probably the right decision to create a tool for QGIS other than other GIS platform because um, a lot of people are using QGIS right now. So anyway, so uh, let's look into the QGIS right now. Um, after you install the QGIS, it basically is a plugin. You will add have a button here in your toolbar somewhere. And if I click this button, you will get some window uh, like this. They say QSWOT 1.5 here. And you will have, you can create a new project. You can uh, open an existing project. So I have an existing project right now. And open project. So it take a while to loading, and uh, that's my, my that's my product. You can see there's a main step here. You have first step delineate watershed, and step two is create HR use, and step three is added inputs and run swap, and uh, step four is visualize. So that's a very simple interface. Basically, all this window here will always on when you do do other operations and. Uh, after some new data is available, they will add uh, into the layer list and uh, you can see the display. Uh, that's basically what we have in the QGIS. Next, let's look, look into the MWSWOT interface. So MWSWOT is another uh, SWOT tool used to create a SWOT model. And this is uh, is created by an organization called World Base. Uh, this is uh, their website. You have some information. Uh, you have some download link here. Uh, why they call MW SWOT? Because MW SWOT is for Mac Window. So MW is for Mac Window. Uh, Mac Window is another um, open source JS platform developed using .NET, but uh, seems. Uh, uh, they already uh, stopped to continue developing this too because uh, uh, I don't know. Um, so what we have right now is a very old version, and uh, but they still uh, support the uh, SWOT 2012. So let's uh, check out uh, what we have in the MW SWOT very quickly. So after you install the Mac window and install the MW SWOT plugin, you will have a menu in here called MW SWOT 2012. If you click that, you will got this window. Uh, if you recall the one we have in QSWOT, it's very similar. You can create a new product. You can also open an existing product. If I open my project here, and loading, loading, and loading, you can see here the main step they change to uh, loading the step they have done. So still loading and loading. You already see on the uh, map here. 
seems like uh, Mac window is loading very slow compared to this. Okay, uh, it's done here. So you can see uh, the main step you have first deletion, delete the wall shell, first, second, create a try use, third, swap setup and run, and the last it will be visualized. So you can see uh, these two are quite similar. So we have a look into this uh, interface in the QSWOT and WSWOT. For you already see there, they are very similar. So let's do a summary here and put them side by side for uh, the same text to see uh, how close they are. So first we will look into the main step page. Uh, in these two softwares. So on the left part is the QSWAT, on the right is the MWSWAT. So you can see uh, when after I open a uh, existing product, so in the main part, in step part, you will have the same thing, uh, all the same four parts here, and on the top you have a new product, existing product, and on the left uh, bottom part you have the reports, uh, so you can use to um, uh, open some of the reports during the delineation. Uh, so it's very similar. Go to next. Uh, next will be the wall shell delineation. So uh, this part will be uh, you need to load the DM file and uh, do the uh, flow accumulation and do define the stream and uh, uh, delineate the catchments and other stuff. So basically, probably it's too small, you cannot see, but you can generally see that uh, it's very similar layout also. First, you have select this DEM here on the top, and then you have some threshold value to define the stream and create the stream. And then you can uh, have some options to, uh, to delete the, the wall sheds. Uh, uh, if you can see here, there's an option here also. Uh, in the queues wallet, you can select a red wall, uh, so basin basically if you select that sub basin as a red wall, they will create a red wall for that sub basin. Uh, here same thing you have the same option uh, options here. So again it's very similar for this section. Uh, next is uh, step will be uh, to create the HRUs. Um, you can see um, um, it's very similar again and on top. Uh, you will give the land use map, land use map, and then soil map, soil map here. And also you need to choose uh, the soil data and the uh, soil table here, different uh, uh, options. And after that, you can set up um, the way you want to define the HRU, uh, dominant land use or dominant HRU or something. Also for the land use, soil, and slope, you can set up a threshold value to uh, define the HRU. And to add last, you can create HRU here. So again, it's very simple. Uh, and the last is the video lens. So um, for the visualization, um, uh, for the spatial part, so basically you want to show the results on a map. Um, so on the left is the QSWOT, um, because my resolution is pretty high and uh, seems um, uh, QSWOT have, haven't been done a good job to, uh, to make this interface uh, very good, but uh, I squeezed in very small. And, but you can see compare uh, to the MW SWOT on the right here. So first you need to choose the scenario and choose the SWOT output also. And uh, then uh, in the QSWOT, you can uh, choose a period from uh, have a starting date, a finish date, but in uh, MW SWOT, you don't have one. Uh, and then you have the result shape file, and again, uh, SWOT, uh, MW SWOT, you have the result shape file. And then you have this table here, you can choose variables. You can choose one of them from list, or you can choose all of them. And then you can choose a summary, totals, average, or everything. And then you have the create button so you can see uh, that map. And then for the, uh, that's for the map part. So if you want to do a plot for a time series, you also can do that in both software. Uh, kind of similar again here. So basically you have choose the variables. You have these uh, tables on the bottom. You can select what, uh, what variable you want to uh, plot. And the same thing here on MWSWAT. 
Uh, very interesting in MW SWOT is the, the SWOT uh, plot this program. It actually, it's a separate program in MW SWOT, and you need to open that uh, uh, in uh, another folder. It's not uh, available in that uh, plugin, but anyway, they give you that so you can use that. And after you do that plot, you can see um, that's the plot itself. On the left is QSWOT, on the right is MW SWOT. So you can see um, it's similar again, and uh, here you have the graph itself, and on the bottom you have uh, uh, the table. So uh, it's very, uh, it's very similar again. Um, so you can see this interface is very similar, and uh, um, I think it's normal, right? So because they uh, they both uh, serve to the same purpose, which it will be uh, you have a DM file and you have soil on all the data so what this interface do is just take in the other file and create uh, SWOT input files right um, uh, another thing we want to compare is the programming side um, so uh, as you may know that uh, QSWOT uh, uh, plugin is created in Python because that's the language you need to use when you create a plugin for the QGIS platform and the MW SWOT because the uh, map window is based on .NET so the MW, um, MW, uh, MW SWOT the plugin is based on the uh, .NET uh, programming language so uh, it's different programming language but a similar interface so I have done a little bit, uh, little bit of research on the uh, QSWOT and uh, MWSWOT set. So what I find is why they are similar because maybe this person here. So here is we have here is the QSWOT interface manual here downloaded from website. Um, in the uh, other list, uh, the last person is called Chris George. So um, so Chris George um, also. Uh, appears in the MW SWOT uh, other list. So uh, I, I want to show you on that, but it seems right now the SWOT website is down, so I can't show you. Uh, if you go into the MW SWOT page on the SWOT website, you can see uh, they say, a oh, Chris George has presented to in some user experience, user uh, conference something. Uh, that's the, I think that will be the same Chris George there. Um, so I think uh, that will be why uh, these two interfaces uh, are so similar because they have the same author, just uh, they use different uh, programming language, uh, this, uh, but they have set, followed the exactly the same design. Um, probably they thought all oh, this design is very good and uh, uh, it is, it's good to follow that uh, uh, design in the Q slot. Um, I'm not sure it's a good design or not, and, uh, but uh, it works, so that's the most uh, important part. So today in this video, we are talking about uh, the QSWOT and MW SWOT. As you can see, these two are very similar. Probably uh, the, they're based on the same design from the same person, so wow, that's why they are similar, right? The only difference is uh, they are based on different JS platform and are using different programming language, but uh, uh, basically they are same software. Okay, thanks guys for watching. And so today is uh, Chinese New Year, so you can see I'm wearing red right now. So because in the New Year day, it's supposed to wear red. And this is will be Year of Dog, and that's my animal, so I should wear red, right? So anyway, so I uh, hope you guys, if you celebrate Chinese New Year, hope you guys have a very good New Year for the year and the dog. Um, so yeah, that's it for today, this video, and I uh, hope to see you guys in next one.